out. Last minute cramming never does the same thing. But I've done That's like, oh, wow. I'm Like the only reason like I appear really smart with this 
is yeah, science did come a lot more naturally than English and reading, but guys, I, I, I'm, I'm not joking when I said I got like a 12 in the reading and English on the ACT. I'm not joking when I said that. I got a 30 in science and a 29 in math, and my ACT score was a 22. So, so when I, when, I, when I make a statement like I do about Cheyenne, the only reason I can say that is because I'm dumber than a box of rocks when it comes to English and science, or English and reading. But, but I will say, guys, I will say part of the reason why also had to do with my work ethic in those areas. So, I, I think that, yeah, oh well, yeah. I think that having, having good work ethic will do you good, but it doesn't increase your ceiling. Yeah. You know what I mean when I, I say that? Really hard like, some people just have higher ceilings just because that's the God-given brain they've been given. But sometimes those really God-given brains people don't reach their ceiling because they don't work very hard. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. Like, part of the reason why I think I'm an okay teacher is because I'm not overly smart. So like I try to like break it down as much as I possibly can. I can't remember if you remember algebra one. I mean, like Merrifield teaches for about ten minutes. I would use the whole forty minute class period. Like that's just how I would do it. Now I'm not saying his way's wrong and my way's better. That's just how I felt like was the best way to do it. So yes. that makes sense. So please don't be offended by what I said. I can only say that because I'm equally, I'm just, yeah, I'm not smart when it comes to a lot of things. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about this. I gave you a whole bunch of vocabulary yesterday. It was kind of a lot to chew on, okay? To, to, to help you be successful with the math, you need to be able to understand or at least know what the vocabulary is talking about. Okay, so what do we say R was? Radius. Radius. Okay, great. The radius of curvature. We know what that, that that's the word, but what is conceptually does that mean? From the, the distance from the, the center of the curves to the exterior. Oh, is that what you were gonna say? Yeah. But like, I don't know if it's to the object. Let, or let's, the, let's, yeah, let's take let's take a circle. Image. Okay? The radius of curvature would be the essentially the radius of the circle. Because essentially what a concave is, is half of a circle. Concave mirror. So it's the distance between the center of your mirror to the middle of what would be your circle of that mirror. Make sense? Okay. The center of curvature is just that middle point. Okay. And there was a few other things that we talked about. I'm trying to remember all we got. P and Q and R, not R, uh, um, H and H prime. So those will come in handy when we start dealing with the equations. Okay? When I say object versus image, what's the difference? The object is the actual thing. Well, the really. Yeah. Well, the image could be real. I mean, not like real in that, like, well, it's a real thing. Yeah, like you can hold it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so a real image is like a hologram. Yeah, a hologram. But the uh, virtual is like, it's like in, a in a mirror. Yeah, like you you could put your hand through a hologram. Yeah. You can't. But you can't yeah. get to the behind the mirror. Yep. Like this is a real image. I can put my hand on it. Right. I don't have to reach through the wall to get to it. That makes sense. Okay. So again, quickly. Uh, uh, a virtual image is a made-up image that your brain creates, right? Okay? And the reason why your brain creates it is because it sees light from an object, and so it's like, I see a picture. Where is it? That makes sense? So it creates that image. This is why when you look in a mirror at yourself, your body, your brain knows, oh, it took this much time for me to see this light. So in order, based on my, all the information I know, it had to have come from behind the mirror at equal distance. Because for example, if I have a mirror here, and 
Here's my object. Okay? The time it takes for the light to come off the object, hit the mirror, reflect back and hit your eye, would be the same time that it would take for light to come off this object and go straight to your eye. Right. That make sense? The distance is the same. And so your, your brain knows that. And so that's why it forms that image there. Okay? Now, um, we so, talk, I talked about the principal axis, right? Yeah. Okay? Yes? No, I mean, it's kind of like um, psychology, but as a child, a baby, uh -huh. when they see in a mirror, do they see like what we would see in a mirror? There's no way I would know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said it's kind of. Like, why would you think they wouldn't see? Because a lot of stuff that we um, we learn in psychology, like, a lot of stuff we see is developed over time of our brain making sense of objects. Mm. So like how you can like flip, like you can wear gob goggles or whatever over what a period of four or five days, and you can actually get your brain to reinvert images. So if you wear glasses or goggles that make your image uh, upside down. Yeah, your yeah. brain flips the image. Otherwise, everything would be upside down based on how it, it, it hits our retina or the back of our eyes. So if you wear, you can wear, you can actually physically wear these len goggle lenses things that actually inverts it again, and so you would see upside down objects. And then eventually, after a period of time, your brain flips the switch and turns it back right side up. So when you take off the goggles, everything looks upside down. That's so great. We should do that as a class. Experiment. That would hurt. Yes. Okay. Is that her well, driving? Probably. That would, yeah. That would be so weird. That's so weird. And they just say, come in right It's Guys, it's amazing. The human brain. It is. Saying it's a supercomputer is like throwing shade on your brain. And a computer? <laughs> Saying your brain is a supercomputer is like throwing shade on your brain. Like your brain is so much smarter than the most advanced possible computer we could ever come up with. I mean, to, to think that I can make walking movements based on like my, my brain telling me to move. Like, split second. You touch something hot in a split second, you know that's hot. Oh, that's hot. So, so, I, for some reason, this slide is all messed up. So, it should you should have an equation, I believe, in your notes. Amen. Okay? It's known as your mirror equation. Uh, what's cool about this particular equation is I, we can predict where an image is going to form based upon if we know how far the object is from the mirror and what the focal distance is. Now, remember, Focal point is going to be different for each mirror depending upon how much it's curved. Does that make sense? If I were to take a guess, and I don't know off the top of my head, if I've got a mirror that's curved like that or i got a mirror that's curved like that, I'm going to assume that the focal point's probably closer here and further away here, just based on how it reflect. Okay? Now, I know I kind of confused Stephen at the end of class yesterday when I talked about how light travels through the focal point, okay? That only is when you've got light coming in from a long ways away. And that's how they figure out what the focal point is. After, outside of that, don't assume that all light from every angle is gonna go through the focal point, because that's not true. If you had a grid of laser pointers, pointers, pointers. that are shining parallel to each other, could you find the focal point? In that? Probably. Probably. Yeah, that makes makes sense. Let's do it. So, I do have a few more things that I want you to get in. Okay? That are more tables. That is just going to be a. Guys, once you figure out the vocabulary here and you figure out the, the sign conventions of this, it'll take some time. But once you figure that out, the math isn't overly difficult. So, here's a chart I want you to put in.
I think it's just um, saying it's positive and negative for the equations. Yeah. Yep. For, for when we do the equations, we have to we have to have, give a direction as to where we're off, where we are. Because a virtual image will always show up behind the mirror, and a real image will always show up in front of the mirror. Would H pi ever be above the axis? I guess if it's the H is. If it's a virtual image. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. This is specifically, guys, for concave mirrors. This is going to change when we do lenses. Because believe it or not, a lenses, lens has two focal points because light goes through the lens. But that's next chapter. Is the chart for concave? All this stuff is for All concave. <laughs> yep. It's a lot. It is. I totally understand that, so I want to make sure that you get that in. So we have two equations that you should have should have in your in your notes. have in your in your notes. Okay? Now I want to get into um, a problem here so that we can apply all of this stuff here. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, that I'm not gonna make you do. Okay? They go into actually making you draw ray diagrams where you like show it coming off the mirror. I, that to me is more work and more unneededness for, for the value that you get out of it. So I'm not gonna make you guys do any ray diagrams or anything like that. The last thing before we get to a problem is that a concave mirror can produce both a real and a virtual image. Okay? It won't be both. Not the same time. Not the same time. What? So, uh, yeah, not the same time. Why? Because either light converges or your brain converges it. You can't be both. Okay. Alright, <laughs> why don't you guys open up your books? I want to show you kind of like all the possibilities. I don't remember, it was like 500 and something. What was that? 456. Yeah. Wow. 456. That's I, I don't even remember that stuff. I'm just open on it though. Oh. That's fine. Well, yeah. Okay, 456. Everyone there? Okay, so we already talked about picture one where if you're from a a, a really far away, the only way lights can act to hit the mirror is if they come in parallel. Okay, look at number two. Okay. If you have an object that is outside your, your center of curvature, okay, you will always produce a real image that is inverted and is smaller. Okay. We'll see that with some of the math. It'll, it should make sense. Okay. When you're at the center of curvature, you will still produce a real image it will still be an inverted. Anytime it's a real image, it will always be inverted. Okay? Anytime it's a virtual image, it will always be upright. Every single time. No, there's no, there's no changes in that when you get to lenses or different types of mirrors. That's always the case. Okay? When you're at your center, you get an inverted real image that is exactly the same size as your object. Kind of makes sense. If you're at the center point of your circle of that mirror, you're gonna get an object that's the same size. Okay, let's progress. If your object is between, uh, in between the focal point and your uh, center of curvature, you actually 
you get and still get a real image, but it ends up being bigger than the object. It gets magnified. Because the point at which those rays converge is significantly further away from the principal axis. When would you ever see a concave mirror? I mean, technically, the spoon is a concave mirror. I'm trying to think of other practical. I think, I'm pretty sure your mirrors and your cars are convex. Um, good question. How do I know if I, if I have a concave mirror right here, how do I know that I'm like, where I am? You have to know some information about that. Mirror. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. What's cool about five is, in theory, if you're at the focal point, the light when it reflects will reflect parallel at every point. And since it reflects parallel at every point, it will never converge. It won't converge in reality, and your brain can't converge behind the mirror because the light is coming in parallel. Yes? Um, so for that, like the top of the pencil, isn't that not at the focal point? So when you create like Yeah, I don't know exactly how that works. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like it, you're saying if it's like is the focal point like just the point in the center of the on your principal axis or is it all everything above that point or below? I don't I don't know the answer to that. Okay? So here's the situation where you're gonna have a virtual image. The only time a concave mirror will give you a virtual image is if it's inside what? The focal point. Now it could be anywhere inside the focal point. Right? It doesn't have to be at that location. As long as it's inside the focal point, due to the, the way light would reflect off that concave mirror, that light won't converge in reality. So your brain sees it and converges it behind the mirror, creating a virtual image. Does that make sense? So anything inside the focal point you'll have a virtual image. Anything outside the focal point, you'll have a real image. And where you are outside the focal point will determine whether it's a, a big image or a smaller image. Okay? So if you just have one of these concave mirrors and you just like walk forward and back, it'll change. The image? Yeah. yeah. And, and when you get inside the focal point, what will it look like? Will you still be able to see yourself? Is that what that means? Why do yeah. you have the image on the other side? Of yep, the you will be able to see a picture like if you were if you had a concave mirror and you stepped inside the focal point, you would see an image of yourself behind the mirror. The same distance. Just like well no, not I don't are those like those wacky mirrors? Even you know, if you look like, like even if you look at a spoon, it looks upside down until you get to a certain point and it starts to go. I've never really done that. Yeah, I'm thinking like of those. Super close, and then you look normal. Like, oh, you walk back out. Like, oh, or like, or like on the phone. Like, 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 even magnifying glasses. I guess that'd be different, though. Like, so this is too dirty. This spoon. Oh. <laughs> I can't tell. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll try. Maybe I'll, I'll get a bigger spoon too. See that. <laughs> I want to do a prop though. No. <laughs> Concave spherical mirror. Just like any physics problem, we're going to find what we're given. Okay, it has a focal point. Am I going too fast? Kind of. Well, are the units for this the same? As like. Um, it doesn't matter. You can. Are you asking, should I convert this to meters? Yeah. You do not need to. As long as they're the same. As long as they're the same. Yeah. Okay. okay, good question. Um, then it says, locate the image of the pencil that is placed upright 30 centimeters from the mirror. So what it's asking you to solve for is what? Virtual. Are you asking for like H prime versus So would that be the well, I'm talking about this first part. The second part is something different. Locate the image. Locate the image. What are you solving for? Image. Which is Q, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah
right? Yeah. Sometimes that's the yeah. Wait, so image 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 image. Yeah, yes. So Locate the image. Where will it be? What At what distance? Q. Centimeters? Yep. P is the object that tells us where we are putting the object. 30 centimeters. Now, here are some things that I'm hoping, maybe not at this point, but as you get a little bit further and do getting more practice with this, you will be able to quickly make a uh, uh, an assessment of what this is going to be. I'm looking at this and I'm saying this is going to be a real inverted image. Anybody know why I know that? It's not outside the focal plane. It's outside the focal plane. It's outside the focal plane. So it has to be a real inverted image. Is there any like guess if it's going to be at the center or not? Center of what? Like center, center of what's it called? Curvature? Curvature? Yeah. Um, I mean, you could do it once you did the math, you could figure that out. I don't know if you could. Well, yeah, I didn't know if it's like a like, sine ratio to like the focal point. Though. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, the center of curvature might actually be twice the focal point, but I'm not 100% sure on that. We'll see. Let's see what the magnification of this is. And if it's greater, if it's uh, greater than 1, then I'm guessing. Then we know we're outside our curvature. Wait. It's less than 1. Less than 1. Yeah. Okay? Now. Yeah. We'll worry about this second part later. Okay, let's first figure out where the image is. Okay? So 1 over 30 plus 1 over Q equals 1 over 10. Oh, I also kind of jumped a little bit of a beat, but this should this should hopefully make sense. Okay, here's my mirror. Okay, let's say my image is here. Let's just make it a pencil. Awful pencil. Ew. Okay. Okay. Um, this would be in front of the mirror. This would be behind the mirror. Does that make sense? Okay, because you're not going, you're not going to be, this isn't a lens where light can go through. Right? So Now, could I have made a concave like this and said this is in front and yeah. this is... Yes, okay. So just, just make sure that you understand context when it comes to what front means. Because front could be, depending on how you draw it, front's going to look a little different. Okay? So that's why P, I didn't put a negative. First off, you're not going to get a negative P ever. Why? Because. Can you ever put an object behind a mirror? Oh, true. Ooh, I don't know, Craig. It's no. alternate dimensions. Just. You can't, <laughs> okay? But Q can be negative if it's a virtual image because it can show up behind the mirror. Does that make sense? Don't all images show up behind the mirror? No, we only said the only time in these situations an image is going to show up behind the mirror is when it's inside the focal point. Isn't that what that whole thing we looked at? So number six is the only one. The only one that shows up behind the mirror is the six. six so you one. can't actually see. Six. You you can if you put it in a reflecting object there. Like technically, if we didn't have a reflecting object there, we wouldn't see it. Yep. So like, if I didn't have this reflecting object here, I wouldn't be able to see this screen. Does that make sense? Like if I change the focus, you wouldn't see the words because it would actually be converging like here or behind. Does that make sense? You have to have a room. Okay. Um, like in order in order to see a real image, you have to have an object that can that's stopping it. That that will reflect it back to your eyes. So the object is the whiteboard. Yeah. So if we had a curved whiteboard, we could have the words just float in there. What? Wait, so you're saying that if that wasn't there, we wouldn't see it because... Yeah, like if this, if, if this screen, or if I move that back, we wouldn't be able to see what we see. It's too far away. Yeah, because light would converge here, and okay. if there's nothing to reflect it back to our eyes, we will never see it. Okay. All right, so let's solve for Q. What do I got to do here? It 
won't be, but I'll show you why it won't be. Okay? I took this and subtracted it over here. Make sense? Huh? I thought that Q was an 8, so I was like, where is that 8? Oh, sorry, yeah, that makes sense. I'm sorry, my Q is not fine. I don't know why, they should use the uppercase Q. Now, I want to be very, very careful. Can somebody solve just this right half here for me? What is that? 115? 1 over, like 115. Oh, 115. Okay, now be very careful here. A lot of people will forget that this Q is on the bottom. Okay, you gotta take the reciprocal. There's a variety of ways you could solve for Q, but you cannot leave it on the bottom. If you think Q is 1 15th, you're wrong. It's the inverse of 1 15th. So here's how I would do it. Whenever I'm doing this, I would, I would always immediately go like that. That'll solve it for you. I made the inverse. Right. I flipped it. Same so principle. Instead of one over Q, right. Yep. Q, Q one. Okay. equals one over that. Okay. You you can do it a different way if you want. You can do the reciprocal. Like like or you could. Okay. If you don't like that, don't do that way. I'm just giving you a. a if you if you're doing that, it's a quick way of doing it. You could cross multiply. You could take the inverse. It just ends up being Q. Wow, I actually drew an eight. <laughs> <laughs> U equals 15. Why can't you just be like, oh, Q equals 15 without actually... I mean, if they're all ones, you can do it. Yeah. Or is it only going to be all ones? Yeah, it should be. Fractional, fractional, fractional. Maybe you do that. Okay? So, your image is 15 centimeters, so it's going to be... Probably between your center of curvature and your, your focal point. So I could do this map and I can figure, okay, I need to put a reflecting image or a reflecting surface at 15 centimeters so that I can see this image. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it. Okay? Now I want to also know, find the magnification of the image, and there's a couple ways. Wait, wouldn't that, wouldn't that mean the object? Okay. Um, let's find the magnification. I don't have anything about the height here, so I can use this equation to find magnification. Now that we have our Q. So magnification would be negative Q over P. So it is behind the mirror? So the negative here does not mean behind the mirror because it's magnification is different. Okay, the positive or negative magnification, that is the one thing where negatives and positives don't tell you whether you're behind the mirror or in front of the mirror. So how did you know that it was inverted? Because I know that any time it's a real image, it will be inverted. But how did you know? Because my object was outside the focal point. And I know, and you will over practice, and any time you have an object outside the focal point for a concave mirror, it's going to be a real inverted. Any time it's inside the focal point, it's going to be a virtual um, I'm all right. Uh, unitless. Yep. Now let's look at, so this would be your answer for magnification. Let's look at your, your sheet here. Sorry, yeah. Okay, let's look at this. Uh, what what image one through six looks like a, uh, a place where we have a a real invert image that's smaller than my object? Two. Two. I'm guessing that I'm pretty sure now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure that the center of curvature is twice the focal point. So I'm guessing this is literally a picture of what two is on here. How did you know it was two and a half? Because uh, four, the image would be double, looks like. Oh, yes. Yep. Does that make sense? Say it all again. So there's no label for... A lot? 
Um, I don't remember where. Oh, so I'm almost 100% positive that uh, your focal point, your center of curvature is always double your focal point. So this image is double. So if I take two times my focal point, I would get the distance. Like if this is 10 centimeters, then this is 20 centimeters. This just tells you that it's half the size of the object. So your image is going to be half the size of the object. If this were. This is this point? Oh, okay. yeah, the positive or negative does not affect whether it still would be the opposite side. So in theory, then, a negative magnification actually does it even on the same side of the mirror. That's why it's a little goofy. Don't worry about when you get negative uh, negative or positive magnification, don't think too much of that. It's just going to be 